I'm Gemma Tully. I'm the research associate for the Durham University team on the Refit project. Hopefully from our other films, you'll understand the methodologies that the Refit project has been using to try and engage different stakeholders, to share understandings of cultural landscapes, to see how they're currently managed, to think about ways that we can work together across different landscape interests to be more collaborative in our approaches for future management. What we're going to explore here is what were the outputs and the impacts of that work? How successful were we in changing perceptions and making people think that landscapes haven't always been the same? And if they haven't always been the same, therefore how important it is that we think about their active management today and for the future. So to understand the outputs and the impacts of the Refit project, in this particular film we're going to focus on what we did in the UK with stakeholders at Badgenden and Salmonsbury. And what we discovered from our perceptions work was that people care deeply about landscapes. They want them to sustain and be well managed for the future. But currently, if you're not actively involved in managing landscapes, so for example if you're not a farmer, or if you don't manage a wildlife site, or you're not an archaeologist who's actively going out and looking at how to protect scheduled monuments and other sites, there really is a very low level of understanding of what's going on. Even if you live in and amongst agricultural fields which have wildlife, farming and historic environment interests, people generally don't understand the laws and policies that are protecting them. So for example, in Europe we have something called agri-environment schemes. And in Britain, over one third of our landscape is protected or managed through these schemes, which are organised by DEFRA and Natural England and involve paying farmers to not grow things, not to subsidise the food, but to actually encourage them to do things like plant seed for wild birds and having wild flower margins around your fields, to options for the historic environment, so perhaps not ploughing a field and allowing it to return to pasture. But of course this is all going on, but most people aren't aware when they look at a field that it is actively being managed for these different features. So this is something that we need to work on. Another important factor is that the way that landscapes are managed, certainly in the UK, is very fragmented. So you have lots of farmers who may individually be doing fantastic things, but they might not know what's going on around them, the local village doesn't know what's going on, you've got small areas managed by wildlife trusts or the national trusts, but things aren't happening together. So from talking to all of our stakeholders, we started to draw out ideas about how this fragmented management could be brought together to share the different interests and actually to bring everyone on board, at least in a discussion, about how we can manage these landscapes for the future, as they are changing and they're going to continue to change. And if we want to make sure that they're changing in a way that is sustainable, then we do need to work together. Let's explore then how successful we were in actually changing people's perceptions of the cultural landscapes of Badgend and Salmonsbury, both through our active engagement events and the online resources. So in the first year of the project, we started small to try and do some experiments to see how we could bring together stakeholders from different interest groups and engage them with the landscapes and make them think about landscape change, and how landscapes need to be actively managed now and how they were actively managed in the past. So at Badgenden, in the summer of 2016, we brought together farmers, uh, museum professionals, wildlife professionals, local residents, and did just an afternoon of auguring. And together we explored the soils, looked at how the soils had changed over time, how human and natural action had caused those changes, and started to think about what implications that might have for the future of the Badgenton landscape. In addition to that, we did a big open day, a public open day, at Salmonsbury, Greystone Farm, where we invited families, local residents, anyone who wanted to come really, to come and explore the Greystones landscape, to learn about the archaeology, to learn about the wildlife, to learn about the current organic dairy farm, and actually to think about how, how all those narratives link over time. People have been farming there for thousands of years. There have been different habitats, different species, and how the community that formed there over thousands of years has shaped that landscape. In the summer of 2017, at both Badgenden and Salmonsbury Greystones Farm, we invited a number of local stakeholders, 
mainly residents, to come together and work with the archaeologists to do more auguring, but this time not just a few samples, to look at the whole landscape and to try and build a picture of that landscape. So we spent a whole week auguring with each group and combined with the auguring we also did small test pits to see if we could not only look at pollens and soils but also to see if there was any archaeological dating evidence that we could explore in those landscapes. And that was very effective and we got some very interesting responses from our stakeholders and participants in terms of how it changed the way that they thought about both the landscape of Badgenden and Salmonsbury. From my perspective I thought you know three days and looking at soil samples is it's going to be so tedious and monotonous but it's, ha it's been far from that we've learned so much about um, going down to different depths um, and what the stories can tell and we didn't expect a snail to be uh, so important to to you know an archaeology really did we? I think my ideas uh, about archaeology um, have been changed quite a bit uh, I think I look back to when I was a kid and it was all to do with Carter finding Tutankhamun's tomb uh, and this weekend I see that looking at the land and the landscape and how man has affected landscape over thousands of years uh, it is as important as Tutankhamun's mask. I've been here many times with my ch grandchildren um, and never even thought about the history under our feet. So now just coming here and listening to you all and telling us what's going on and then seeing what's down in the dig, it's just really, really fueled me now. I really want to go and do more. We should definitely be thinking about what's under our feet before we start building new homes, I think, because we're destroying things for our children, our grandchildren and beyond. Um, and I'd just really like to protect that because I've really enjoyed doing this today and yesterday. And I think it would be great for our children to learn and to understand how our countryside has evolved and our daily lives really. Mm, definitely, because mm. okay. we've always wondered what's beneath, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this because we, we can work above the, the surf, on the surface of greystones and, um, and, um, but to learn what's actually going on underneath and we've learnt a few things, that there's some habitats by where we live in and the, the different mounds that we thought what could they be but now we know what they are, sort of how, it's, how the land's been farmed. Um, so that's answered a few questions. So yeah, we're I don't think we'll be able to switch this off, do you? No. <laughs> and, I, and I think the fascination for me is that, um, you know, we stand on the rampart over there and I think, <coughs> well, when someone was standing here 3,000 years ago, what, what did they see? Alongside the targeted work that we did at Greystone Farm, we also had another public open day love your landscape part two and again we invited the local public and other people visiting the area to come to see what we were doing with the auguring and the test pitting and to meet our environmental archaeologist and also learn about landscape and how we can read landscapes and landscape change but also again to engage with the other messages from Greystones Farm to do with modern farming and wildlife and the future of the site. The Love Your Landscape Day was also fantastic in terms of really highlighting to the local community what an amazing resource Greystones Farm is and what a great job the Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust are doing of managing that landscape, not just for the present, but they have a long-term plan for the future. So these are some of the things that we did, but the outcomes in terms of changing perceptions really varied because as you can imagine, it's quite a difficult message to communicate that landscapes aren't static, that they change, that they've always changed, and therefore we need to think about and plan for that change for the future. Even archeologists are guilty of looking at a place as it was just in one particular time period and struggling to think about how that landscape looks different now. So obviously when we worked with all these different community members, for some people the refit project really was a revelation in terms of the new understanding that they had of landscapes. For others there was a, sh a slight shift in perception but it is a very hard message to communicate. I think it's given an, an added perspective and has helped inform us how the landscape has been modelled through both natural and um, human habitation, natural um, environment and how its settlement over many, many, many years, probably for a longer period than we'd previously thought, 
um, has had an influence in what we see today and, and, the, and the, the alluvial clays and the, um, all the soils we've looked at today have been quite, a, quite, a, quite an eye-opener to um, an understanding of how things happened in the past. Yeah, but I don't think our 70 years here is going to make a lot of difference. <laughs> Inevitably, for some, just as with our archaeological colleagues, the element of time depth is quite hard to grasp and it made it difficult for some to really appreciate the impact that an individual could have on the landscape. We also produced online resources. These included very simple things like PDF walks that people could simply download, take into the landscape, which again then told them about all the different narratives from the archaeology to the farming to the wildlife and the local community. In addition, if you couldn't visit the landscape, we created some virtual guides so that even for those who don't live anywhere near Badgenden or Salmonsbury, they can visit these landscapes through an online virtual guide. They can hear the farmers talking, they can see the wildlife, they can again understand how all these different narratives come together and create the landscapes we see today. The feedback we've had has been great and it's demonstrated that online resources can also change perceptions of landscapes and help people engage with places they've perhaps never visited to understand how they're managed and how they've changed over time. And that actually those messages that may be about Badgenden or Salmonsbury resonate with other landscapes, with the places that people are living now that might be hundreds of miles away. So all of this, the engagement events, the online resources have been fantastic in terms of showing how we can start to change perceptions and how we can use this information to create new strategies to think about how we can manage landscapes collaboratively and work with perhaps non-traditional landscape managers being local communities other people in planning and designing new policies and thinking about how we want our landscapes to look in the future and how we can manage them together making the stakeholder and community passions and values in the landscapes better known to policymakers and simultaneously making the policy more accessible for these communities and stakeholders is therefore a key part of what the Refit project wants to do. So in the spirit of access, we've brought all of the different elements of the Refit project together to create a paper that explores this from the UK perspective. It's a free open access paper that you can read by following the link below. So what next? Refit is, although coming to an end in 2018, all the project partners are continuing to work in these cultural landscapes. The UK team has embarked on new research in the Cotswolds and that's exploring how uh, the, the stakeholders interact at the moment across the Cotswold landscape. And what we're hoping is that out of that work we'll develop some online resources to facilitate that integration between stakeholders. So this might include, for example, local residents being able to find out about what farming types are going on in their landscapes and how that works, how that's funded. Also for landowners to look at what heritage and archaeology is in their landscapes. Also we're developing new uh, resources for the Ulaka and Bibrak landscapes including an online digital guide as we have for the UK landscapes and that will be available soon. So hopefully you'll continue to follow our research which you can find on our project website through our Twitter feed, links to which are below. And thank you very much for watching.